Okay, so our speaker today is Nicodemo de Scali. Um, so he's a lecturer here at, at Brunel, um, where I'm based as well. Um, he did his PhD back in Turin on the polymer self-assembly um, using a combination of CFD and MD techniques. Um, he then moved to the University of Manchester, where he worked on machine learning and, and optimization of, of computational chemistry, um, before a stint in the mathematics department at the University of Leicester, working on free energy, um, then moving to Nottingham to do some work on porous media, and then recently um, back to, 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 to Manchester before coming to Brunel. Um, his experience is, as you can see, quite varied, um, using a kind of mixture of, of grow racks, and I think more recently starting to use lamps. Um, and today he's going to talk to us about working on lamps. Now, Nicodemo's worked basically on, on both the development side and as a user on lamps. So it's, 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 he's a really sort of the best person to give us this talk today. Um, and he's recently been given a, a CCAM SAMPIC grant, which he's actually using to develop a, a software, user cleaving, uh, which is, is a free energy calculation. So as part of this talk, he'll, he'll give you an introduction to using lamps on, on Young, um, before giving you a bit of kind of uh, background on actually how you can kind of develop your own packages as well. Um, so yeah, well, without any more from me, I'll pass on to, to Nicodema, um, and we'll, at the end we'll have questions. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat. I'm not sure, I guess in terms of time, it's best to save them towards the end, but obviously if you put them into the chat as we go, we can we can either address them during or, or at the end. Um, and obviously if anything's kind of quick and, and needs clarification, feel free to kind of stick your hand up. Um, so yeah, I'll pass over. <laughs> Thanks for the kind of introduction and thanks for uh, the organizing to um, give me the chance to be here to present uh, LAMPS and include some of my work uh, in it. Uh, so as uh, Edward said, I have a, let's say, broad experience on a range of computational modeling in what is called now multi-scale modeling from the quantum mechanics up to the computational dynamics. I focused on the molecular dynamics part with different software, and um, I ended up using LAMPS, uh, as Edward said, either as users and um, uh, developer of uh, new uh, functionality of the code. So let's start uh, with the presentation. Now, what I'm going to do today and what I'm not going to do today I'm going to present uh, LAMPS and we'll focus on the code. Uh, I will give you an, an explanation of uh, the main feature of the code. Uh, but of course, this is not a lecture on molecular dynamics. I will introduce just the very broad features of molecular dynamics. But then I will start directly assuming that everybody is more or less familiar on uh, uh, MD calculations. Uh, Second thing, I will, I cannot possibly to explain all the features of LAMS in a, in a single, in one hour uh, session. Um, if you consider that the, ma the manual is well beyond 1000 pages, probably 1300 uh, pages or even more, if I remember correctly the last version of the manual. So there is not, there's definitely no way to explain everything in a, in a single hour. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do today is uh, instead presenting you the philosophy of LAMPS, which in which is in a way different from other uh, uh, MD codes. Then I will give you an example of running uh, simulation on Young, and also I will I will reserve the last part of the of the lecture on this, uh, describing how you can introduce new features in LAMPS. Uh, what kind of things you can do, what kind of things you cannot do. I will give you an example of the package that I'm developing um, for thermodynamic intervention and calculation of surface free energy in LAMPS using this uh, cleaving methodology. So having said that, what is molecular dynamics? Very standard introduction in molecular dynamics is a computational experiment conducted on a molecular model. Uh, we generate, uh, uh, we start with a, a, a set of atoms, molecules of actually beads uh, or uh, particles. We generate um, a collection of configurations in time 
which we call the trajectory. And this traje from this trajectory, we can extract information about this system. Uh, for this reason, MD is a, as a, as a, as a character of both theory and experiments, because of course we need to, um, the, the equations, the equation, um, the equation of motion to, to, to generate a trajectory, but then we can uh, create um, simulations of different systems at different uh, thermodynamic points, for example. And this is kind of performing an experiment on the system itself. It can be uh, applied to a range of different systems in for the, which varies in complexity and application from break, break gases to polymer, metals, biomolecules, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, an MD simulation postulates the interactions between two elements, which could be, as I said, atoms, or, or not, or not only atoms, I would mainly talk about atoms, but MD can be used for cross graining or even uh, particle interactions. Uh, we are seeing, we are postulating the interactions between two elements or two atoms, um, uh, giving a functional form. Therefore, we need to uh, define the, the parameter for this functional form that can be derived from theory or from experiments. And of course, MD simulation is a fully classical technique. Uh, therefore, we are not considering quantum mechanics, uh, uh, but only classical mechanics. Um, which is good uh, for most of the applications, not good for every, every kind of application. More realistic, more, uh, more realistic models uh, involving more complex molecules requires more complicated, uh, more, more complicated force field uh, to, for example, model the uh, bond between two atoms or the bending of the, of the, of the integral. Uh, um, angle uh, that you can find in a molecule. And again, all this uh, force field needs to be, uh, all the parameters belonging to this force field needs to be needs to defined in uh, some way using theory or experiments. Now, what we usually see in MD course, in standard MD course, we, in standard MD course, we are, we are focusing on, uh, the starting point, so giving a configuration at time zero, uh, the, start, the starting configuration of the simulation. We specify the interaction field, we describe the interaction field how, um, for the particular system that we are considering. And then basically what we say is that we plug everything in this black box, which is our MD code. And this black box gives us uh, the positions and velocity uh, of the molecules and atoms at a later time. So basically we are skipping uh, whatever is within the black box. Today, instead we are uh, opening this box and we are seeing what is inside this box. And this box contains in, this, in, in today's lectures, uh, lumps. LAMS is a classical molecular dynamics force, molecular dynamics code, with, with, uh, which focuses on materials modeling. Uh, and I can, we can say that together with Gromax is probably one of the most widespread open source software for MD simulations. Of course, the Gromax and LAMS, they're not the only open source code that you can find, a range, there is a range of code, but uh, we can, simply, we can simply say that these two represents the, 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 the most widespread ones. LAMPS includes potential for uh, solid state materials, metal source semiconductors, soft matter, uh, biomolecules or polymers, uh, coarse grain or mesoscopic system. Uh, and it can be used to model atom, do atomistic classic Let's say atomistic simulations, but all, but you can actually lumps in math is much more general than that. It is um, an engine to obtain uh, particle uh, particle evolution, and this particle can be uh, anything as long as as long as you, you specify the, um, uh, the the form of the of the, of the interactions between between these particles themselves. 
Some example of calculations, these are the system that I considered, uh, for example, liquid solid interface in aluminum or uh, manifold crystals or more generally, more generally uh, Leonard Jones crystals. But of course, these are not the only things that you can do lamps. If there is a range of um, uh, a work performed in lamps in any, uh, in any field that you can think of. This is just a selection of the, of the, of the, of the paper obtained using lamps that you can find on the lamps website. Now let's start by uh, stating what are the strengths and weaknesses of, uh, of lamps. Now, among the strengths, I can say that lamps includes a whole range of potential. Uh, so you can have pair interaction, lots of different types of pair interactions, Leonard Jones, uh, uh, Coulomb, uh, long range interactions. Um, but, uh, but also uh, interaction for bond bending um, uh, and all the, all the uh, intramolecular interactions. The, the, the strength of lamps, when I say that it includes a whole range of potential, it, it says that lamps code them as a, as a general uh, functional form, and then you have to specify which are the uh, which are the parameters. So if you choose one particular potential functional form and you specify some particular parameters, then uh, you are using, for example, the Dromos potential or the charm potential. Uh, LAMS does not distinguish between a package that contains the Dromos potential or the charm potential. They, it has this uh, general functional form, which are, of course, developed for those particular force fields, but you can use uh, for any simulation if you want. Uh, if you are doing some, I don't know, mesoscale simulations and you need a, a, a bonding potential or a particular form, you just pick up the, the, the functional form, form from, the, from the list of uh, lamps potential and you use for your system. Uh, the way the lamps is written um, means that we see that in a second, lamps use a sort of um, uh, scripting technique so the input is very flexible and you can do lots of different, uh, and it's very flexible and you can apply to lots of different cases, lots of different uh, way or run the simulation. I will say, I will say more on this on, in a second. Um, and also it is easy to extend and customize, that is to say, to add new, new uh, functionalities, new, new, for, new uh, force field, new interactions, a uh, new way to compute stuff uh, because of the way that uh, LAMPS is written, that is very modular and you just need to, uh, we see that also in, uh, in the course of the, of the, of the presentation, but LAMPS is, is written in um, uh, C++ with uh, uh, class style. So you just need to, if you want to uh, add a new pair interaction, you just need to uh, copy one pair style that is already in lamps that inherits all the things from, from, the, from the general class defining the force field and you just do your, your modification within that the right class and everything else, all the, all the uh, uh, including this new class within the main code is taken care uh, by lamps itself, which is something that I, I think, I believe, uh, is uh, unique among these uh, the molecular dynamics code. And among the strengths, I can say that is very well documented. The, as I say, the manual is more than 1,000 pages long, but there's also the uh, online version, which is very easy to navigate. And also, it has a very active user community. In fact, the first thing that everybody says when you use labs, and if, uh, if you have any question, is look for a similar question in the in the, the history of the of the user community because 99 percent there is already some someone else that asked the same question uh, that, that you would that you that you wanted to ask so, uh, as about the weaknesses um other codes for example gromax can be uh, faster in terms of computational time 
in particular for bio-related problems because Gromax is very well optimized specifically for those, uh, for those uh, uh, kind of simulations. LAMPS uh, does not have all the uh, array of programs uh, that, for example, Gromax has to, for the pre and post processing. Uh, for example, I'm thinking of Gembox, which is a very simple way to create a box of water and solvate molecules and so on and so forth. You have to rely on external codes or repository uh, for the pre and post processing. Um, it's not as intuitive uh, and, sim and simple um, as other, other programs, for example, Gromax. So we can say that the learning curve for uh, LAMPS is much more stiff uh, than, uh, than uh, the ones for Gromax. So what, what is uh, the final, uh, my final advice? Well, I cannot say LAMPS is better than others or LAMPS is worse than others. I'm just presenting you face value, uh, the, the, the strength and weaknesses. And as I, exp I have experienced that, uh, my suggestion is to uh, try to, what are you looking for in your kind of calculations? I can say that if you're just a user that you're running standard MD simulations of biomolecules, probably Chromax is the uh, uh, better choice for you. Uh, other, um, however, I prefer LAMPS in some way because it allows you to better control the simulations because it allows you to specify everything in the input you can you can also uh, you have much more i, I feel that they have much more control of simulations uh but again this is based on my personal experience so my final suggestion is um, you have to check by yourself which is the best tool uh, for what uh, what you're doing so having said that how what is the philosophy of labs I like to say LAMPS does not look like a standard MD code. What you usually do, for example, in Gromax is to, you prepare your input file, the topology with all the interactions between the atoms, you specify which uh, uh, atom is um, forming a bond with, with each other atoms and what else, uh, so on and so forth. You have the coordinate file with the position of the atoms um, and possibly the velocities. And you, have, and you have an input file where you specify which kind of simulations and which are the physical um, uh, quantity that, that, you, that, that you need. And then you specify which thermostat you're using, the coefficient for the thermostat, the barostat, uh, the numerical constants, and, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Then you run the simulation. Uh, Gromax uh, just produced this long trajectory. Then you collect this trajectory and you uh, run any uh, post-processing uh, tool that, that you need to collect the results that, that, you, that you want. In LAMPS, instead, you do, of course, something like that. You have to produce the F still to prepare the coordinate file and the topology. But LAMPS looks like more a bash script rather than a standard than the code. That is to say that in the in the lamp script you, you actually have a lamp script with instructions that are when you run lamps they are read by uh, by lamps and executed one by one as it is a bash script and in lamps everything is a command and when I say everything and when I, when I say everything I mean everything if you if you forgot if you forget to, to include the command run. LAMPS will go through all the other commands and then exit without running the simulation. If you don't include the dump command, which is the command you see in a second to uh, uh, dump the, the, the trajectory every few time steps, you won't get any trajectory at the end of the simulation. The simulation will run, uh, the, 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 the equation of motion will be uh, sold for every time step, the thermostat will be applied and so on and so forth, but you won't get any projection here. So as any, any scripting language is there for LAMPS as its own commands, and what I'm going to do today is just give you a very quick and brief overview, overview of these commands. The commands in LAMPS are divided in these macro classes, 
uh, which I listed here. So we have the fix uh, command, which are operation to be performed every time step. The compute uh, command, which uh, is used to calculate properties during the simulation. The pair stars, which defines the interaction. Here you define the first fit. The variable command, which is a command that you can define your own variables within the script. Uh, as the variable in, a, in a, uh, they look like the variable in the parse script, you also have the sign dollars to be when you want to use that, when, when you want to use them. The thermostyle command that defines the style of the output, that is to say which information are to be uh, put in the output. Uh, if you want just to have the total temperature, you can just output the total temperature. If you want, you can have an output with 10 uh, different, uh, 10 or more different um, uh, properties, temperature, uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, uh, volume of the box, component of the pressure tensor, and so on and so forth. And dump is the command to save the configuration and other properties during the simulation. So let's start with the fix uh, command. A fix in LAMPS is any operation that is computed during the time step that alters in some way the property of the system. Apart from force calculation, neighbor list construction and output, everything else is a fix. So for example, if you want to uh, integrate the equation of motion each time step, you have to specify uh, the, 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 the fix that uh, integrate the equation of motion every time step. If you don't put this fix, then you won't have an integration of the equation of motion. In this, in this particular case, this fix here, can you see my pointer? I think yes, you should, you should be able to see it. Uh, it's not just them. Um, so this fix say that you are applying the NB thermostat, that is to say you are just integrating the uh, the, the equation of motion for all the atoms in the in the system, and the fix has a standard um, uh, uh, syntax. So you you say that you want the fix. So you say uh, you specify fix. Then you write an ID for the seek for the for the for the fix, which is uh, uh, from now on the fix one is referring to. Uh, the integration of equation of motion. Then you specify the group of the atoms uh, at, with, uh, which you want to consider for that particular fix. That is to say, uh, in this case, all. So we want to apply this fix to all the atoms. And as you can easily guess, you can specify subsets of atoms. Uh, that is to say that if you want, if you don't want to integrate the equation of motion for all the atoms, you can specify only a subset of atoms, and only those uh, with the, uh, the, 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 the um, position and velocity will be changed using the equation of motion. Then the style, in this case, the style is NB, and then uh, the style can, can have arguments and you have to specify uh, uh, arguments. Some of these arguments are optional, some are mandatory. It depends, uh, it's written everything in the, in the definition of the, of the style uh, of the, of the, of the, of the fix itself that you can find on the, on the documentation. For example, in this case, we want to uh, modify uh, the force uh, applied to a group of atoms. So we are saying that uh, we are modifying the force uh, for uh, the, the group of atom all. Uh, there should be no, there should not be a point here, but basically we are uh, putting the force zero for uh, for the for this group of atom for all for all these atoms that would be useful in some in some situation. Then you have a compute. A compute is a diagnostic which is performed on a group of atoms uh, uh, and used to extract quantitative information from a, from a simulation while it is run. Uh, quantities are usually computed in instantaneous value. So if you specify a compute, then uh, where every time the compute is involved is using the, configura the configuration of atoms at that particular time step to, uh, to calculate this information. 
uh, the, the information that, that you want. The computes comes, uh, the computes come in four flavor. We have global computes, per atom computes, local computes, and per grid computes. Com uh, global computes, you are calculating one simple, one sim uh, single quantity for uh, uh, for the whole system. For example, the temperature. Uh, per atom computes, as the name says, you are obtaining one uh, quantity per atom in your, in your system. Uh, and the output is a vector uh, or an array if you have multiple quantities, a vector because you have one quantity for each atom of, uh, uh, of your system. Um, local, the quantities are calculated by each processor based on the, on the atom tones. This is good for if you want to debug your uh your calculations uh per grid uh, you have to define a regular grid and the quantities are calculated along the uh, average along this uh, this grid in your, in your system uh, the syntax is more or less the same uh, you have to specify compute then the id of the compute the, the, the group of atoms with which you want to consider in your id uh, the style uh, uh, of the ID and the argument uh, related to which are can be again mandatory or optional. For example, if you want to compute the RDF uh, among all of the atoms, you are uh, specifying something like, something like that. So you are specifying compute, the name of the compute, which is one. I want to add the, the RDF between all the atoms in the system, and I want 100 bits in the RDF. I want to compute, for example, the mean square displacement, again, um, uh, uh, using all the atoms in the system, uh, or I want to calculate the diagonal components of the local stress tensor in the, in the, uh, in the x direction. The next style uh, that we are considering is the pair style, uh, which sets the formulas used by LAMPS to compute pairwise interactions. Uh, I'm not going into the detail of all the kind of interactions that you have to, uh, um, uh, that, that, that are available in LAMS. So I'm talking about pair style because this is the most common um, uh, pair uh, style, uh, style for, for the interaction. But of course, there are style for bonds, for the bands, for the dihedrals. Uh, but to, to not add too many things to this to this presentation, I will, I will just focus on uh, the pair style and just give you uh, the flavor of uh, what uh, what you can do with lines. Uh, so in uh, in the pair style interaction again, you, you have to use the pair style command, the name of the style, and the argument. For example, in this case, I want to use the Leonard Jones with a finite cutoff, and I'm saying that I want to use pair style, and the, and the style is LJ slash cut, uh, and here the, the, the argument is the cutoff. So the cutoff is the, 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 the pair style is, is truncated at uh, 2.0 uh, units. That is another thing that the units in lumps, we we'll see that in a second, are not. Uh, are not fixed. You can define. You can use different kind of units in your in your calculations. Uh, in this case, I want to use the uh, uh, Leonard Jones and Coulomb uh, with this cutoff. Uh, cutoff at two point five. And so moving on. Um, the variable command. This command allows to assign one or more strings to a variable name for, evalu for evaluation later in the input script during a simulation. That means that we can reference anywhere in the script the, the variable once it, is, uh, once it is defined and use it. For example, we can use as input for um, and Leonard Jones, uh, for example, for this pair style, I'll see, you'll see that in a second in the script. There are different uh, styles of variable. Uh, uh, string, which can, I can assign one or more strings. Equal, which stores a formula or a constant, which produces a single number. 
atom, uh, atom which sort of formula which can be evaluated for uh, uh, for each atom in the system format which specify a C-style uh, ways of writing uh, a string uh, file where you can specify a file name and this file name can contains a list of uh, values that are assigned to the script. And this is useful if you want to run a simulation by changing some parameter in the system. You will see that when we talk about the living calculations. And delete, you can uh, remove the variable and free its name to be used if you want to use it again. Uh, here are some examples. As I was saying, for example, we want to use in the paste style. Uh, the, 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 the variable instead of writing into the paste type the name of the, 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 the number. And this is one of the reasons why I was saying you have more control in labs because you can uh, specify at the beginning of your uh, calculations all the variables, you can specify all the, all the numerical coefficients of the, of the interactions as variable and you have a store in one position of your script and you can control um, the, which variables are you, uh, are you using instead of having to look through the different part of the input script where you define the first style uh, and which was the variable assigned to it. Here in is an example of a more complicated uh, uh, definition of variables. So here I'm defi defining a variable called dense, which is the density in the system. Uh, in uh, this is produced using the Lennard-Jones unit, and then I'm calculating this quantity uh, using the, the variable density, specifying this formula. Uh, the kind of, of uh, function that you can use in a variable are, of course, all listed in the in the uh, in the manual, in the LAMPS manual, there are lots of different things that you can do with variables. Then the, we have the thermostyle command. Here we can specify uh, that the output that is printed by LAMPS, for example, uh, using the custom, uh, using the custom uh, keyword, we can say, want to be, uh, I want, for example, I, I, I want to, that lamp prints for me on, on screen the step, the current time step, the temperature the time, at that time step, the potential energy uh, at, uh, at that, uh, that particular time step, the total energy, which is the potential energy, energy plus the kinetic energy, the pressure in the box, and the volume of the box. For example, I'm running there an MPT simulation, and I want simulation, and I, and I want to check uh, that if the volume of the box is not. Uh, fluctuating much. If you if you specify this output for an MBE or MBT simulation, what you get for volume is just a constant number. Uh, this is in this way you decide what what we want what we want to be, to be printed. And in this uh, uh, there is another aspect of the flexibility. I will uh, go back in a second, but. Uh, uh, you can reduce as much as possible the, the output if you want to save computational time. Of course, printing something means output it means uh, uh, increasing the computational time. You can just uh, plot the temperature and the pressure just to check that your calculation is, uh, your NPT calculation is doing correctly uh, and not printing uh, all the rest. Or you can have just for the compression time or just for the run time. There are lots of things that you can do. Like. The dump command is the way you store the trajectory. Uh, you save a snapshot of the atom quantities in one or more files every time, every n time steps. Uh, if you specify a single, a single file, for example, in this case, then you get everything done in a single file. If you specify, if you use the wildcard here, you have lots of, uh, you have every time uh, lumps dump something, it does that in a different file with, uh, with uh, uh, using the time step and into, into the file name. And you can choose, uh, you specify one style, you can have uh, 
specified styles, which is, for example, IA in Atom or XYZ, where you can customize the, the output. I want, for example, to be in this case in the output two, I want to uh, I want to be uh, I want to save the ID of the atoms, the, the index of the atom, uh, the, the type of the atom, and the, uh, and the position XYZ. So this is how the, the command in general works. Of course, it was a very uh, uh, broad introduction. There are lots of styles. There are un probably hundreds of, if not hundreds, close to uh, different fixes, different compute, different styles. I cannot go through all of them. The only thing you can do is to uh, look what, what are you looking for and uh, search within the uh, lamps manual if there is already a fix or compute that does something that they do that. Uh, what I'm going to, uh, to do now instead is to uh, look in detail how an input file is built. This is a simulation that I'm, uh, I was running. Uh, I will show you some results that, that can be obtained, but this is the input file that I was using. So uh, we start by uh, defining the units of the calculation. In this case, I'm using the Lennard Jones reduced units. As I was saying, this is not the only uh, set of units that, that, you can, that you can use in labs. There are, there can, if you are uh, running, for example, biomolecule, there is one set of units more um, specific for biomolecules when you have the quantities, the distances in Armstrong, uh, the energies in uh, kilojoule, if I don't kilojoule, if I remember correctly. Uh, if you are using, for example, if you're running calculation on metals, there is another different um, uh, unit style that allows you to, to have the, um, the, the properties in, in, uh, in uh, uh, units more related to the, the, to the material, uh, metal material world. Uh, so in this sense, you have much more flexibility instead of to translate every time if you are if you are using a different force field every time in the in the units of the of the code. Uh, then we have the atom style uh, atomic. There is not the only atom style that you can use. Uh, in this say, if you are we are using atomic, we are saying that all the atoms uh, have this set of, set of attributes that are these are just vector instantiated by lamps, which is mass, positions, velocity. Uh, if you are using different molecules and different more complicated systems, there are other, other atom style, or you can also add your own if you choose, if you write a different atom style uh, uh, file. Then we are specifying the boundary condition in the system. PPP means that we are running boundary condition in the three direction. And if you can guess, uh, if, you if you change this P, you can run system without boundary condition in a particular direction. For example, if you change P in the first position that we have boundary condition on, the, on X and Y, uh, sorry, and Z, Y and Z direction. Then we are reading the data that is the, the initial configuration from this file. This is the name of the file that I'm using. And then we are setting the mass uh, for the system. In this case, since I'm working with reduced Leonard Jones unit, I'm setting everything to one. And this is one of the features, the nice feature of LAMS, you can use the wildcard. Now in this system, I have only one atom, one type of atoms, but if I have 100 types of atoms, and if I use mass wildcard and um, the name of the mass, I can assign all the atoms the same. Uh, the same mass because it's not always useful, but it can be in some occasion. Then, as I said, I writing all the relevant variables that I'm using in, in the script in a single place. As soon as I have defined the main, the main, uh, uh, the main part of the, the simulation, what I'm seeing, what I'm actually simulating. Here I'm describing. What I'm telling lamps, what I'm actually simulating. Then I'm defining all the variables. So I'm, I'm saying that there will be an equilibration run for 200,000 times step, and then a production run for 300,000 times step, and then um, 
the, the time step I'm using is this one. Uh, the, the sigma for the for the for the Lennard Jones is this one. The sigma the sign of the Lennard Jones is one. The cutoff is uh, 2.3. The temperature of the system, and so on and so forth. I'm saying that I uh, uh, out, uh, output all the all the simulation all the all the um, uh, all the properties at every 1,000 step. Uh, I'm dumping the configuration every 10,000 times step and so on and so forth. I also have very, very, very good variables, which is variables that I'm using in the rest of the code, which are derived from the, from the, from the, from the numerical value that I define at the beginning. You don't need to do that. This is just, a, a, my opinion, is a way to have your uh, input more clear and is more easy co controllable because uh, you can check which is your sigma, which is your epsilon, without looking for uh, exactly where you define the phase style. Then we are defining the phase style for our code. Uh, here I'm using the Leonard Jones cut and the, the, uh, uh, the finite cutoff. Here I'm setting the pair coefficient uh, between all the different types. Again, I'm using white card. If I'm using white card, this means that all the possible pairs needs to use this uh, epsilon and sigma. In, in this case, I have only one type, so I can just have uh, written one and one. Uh, so in this case, it's the same. But one thing is you have to specify all the possible pair interaction. What are the, 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 the um, what type of pair coefficients are you using? Uh, then we are specifying some command for to build the neighbor list. These are specific. Uh, this uh, says that uh, I'm using, I'm running and building the neighbor list every time step. Uh, but actually, I'm checking. Uh, uh, I'm all, I'm actually rewriting the neighbor list by checking if an atom has moved by more than half of the distance during the, the time step. Uh, this is a way to tell, uh, this atom modify sort is a way to tell to uh, processor to reorder the, num the number of atoms uh, assigned to each processor, which is something that, that can um, uh, uh, increase the efficiency of the calculations. Then I'm initializing the velocity, which is a seed. Uh, this is the temperature at which uh, we want to uh, we want to initialize the velocity and say that I'm zero the, the total linear momentum, the angular momentum. Uh, then I'm saying that I want to that the, the properties of the system are written in the output every time, in every thermal steps and steps. Uh, I want to the, the, the projected dump uh, in this folder called dump with this name, every dump step, dump step. I want to revise a restart file, every distance step. A restart, a restart file is sometimes uh, is different from the dump because the restart file contains all the information uh, of the simulation at that particular moment. In this way, you can restart the simulation starting exactly for that particular time step. Then I'm uh, uh, zeroing the linear, total linear momentum in the third direction. And here is where I'm actually running the simulation. So I'm running the simulation with this time step using an NDT ensemble with this temperature. And then I'm saying to RAMs, to RAMs that I'm running the first run using uh, this number of time step, and this would be a micro-depression run. And then without stopping, after, after Lamps did his run, he keep going in reading, and he, he uh, creates all these uh, things to calculate the uh, radial distribution function and the stress tensor within the, within the system. And then it does a second run uh, calculating all these properties. So in Lamps, we are using, what we usually do is you do the equilibration, you stop the simulation, you start your run, or you do a single run, and then you cut the trajectory um, 
when 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 you when you have your production point. In lamps instead, if I if I specify the dump comma after this first run, I won't have uh, I would have not any uh, trajectory saved during the filtration. I will, I will only have the trajectory saved during the production. So this is the kind of things that you can do. This is how the data file looks like. Uh, number of atoms, number of types. I have only one types. Uh, this, the box, the size of the box in the two directions. And here I'm just specifying the index of the atoms, the type of the atoms, and x, y, and z coordinates. Of course, for more, it is much more complicated because you have uh, more types, but generally the file, uh, the data file, is um, overall looks like this. So this is a, an example of output. Uh, LAMPS writes lo lots of information about the system. Uh, this is the kind of output that I'm getting. Of course, the example, the molecular energy is zero because I don't have molecules in the system, uh, but I'm plotting the air the temperature just to check if it's correct. And then LAMPS also gives some information about the, 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 the efficiency of the, 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 of the Domain the composition, giving the, the, the balance and the, the percentage of the time spent in uh, doing all the calculations uh, for the pair, for the tomato, uh, the, the writing, the communications, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, in Young, you have uh, Young encourages to run large jobs, uh, possibly spread out across different nodes. How does it work? Uh, how does uh, uh, how, how much do these labs in doing that? Well, it turns out that this is one of the strengths of labs because LAMS was written with MPI in mind, which is the, the, the parallelization strategy strategy that you need to spread the calculation across different modes. Uh, on top of that, LAMS uh, uses other speed up strategies, uh, for example. Uh, the uh, multi threading using uh, open MP. Uh, but the, these are mostly add on to the main code. They are not as optimized and effective as the, um, the MPI parallelization. But the point is that to, to run the calculation across several, several nodes, you need MPI. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is where LAMS uh, is, is very strong. Uh, and you can use the OpenMP uh, multi-threading to add a layer of uh, parallelization to your domain. So one thing that I did is, for example, to ask for two nodes uh, and then run uh, eight MPI job, each using 10 uh, OpenMP threads. Uh, so in this sense, uh, LAMPS is very, uh, LAMPS and YAM are, very, are working very well together. Uh, these are some tips and tricks. Uh, of course, I, again, these are uh, general observ empirical observation. Everything will depend on your particular case, on, on how you run the simulation. But in general, uh, you have to be sure that even the domain comp the, comp the, the composition in LAMPS is very good because it is embedded within the core of the code. You can still suffer with load imbalance. Uh, for example, if you have slab simulation, in that case, you must consider to reduce the size of the, of the MPI processes and instead resort to use more threads, which are less effective for load balance because they divide across atoms and not spatial domain. Uh, if you use complex potential, again, uh, you are increasing the communication time with respect to the potential. Again, so you have to consider uh, probably at some point for a particular potential lamps is not, not giving the idea of scaling uh, with the number of threads, sorry, with the number of, of, of MK processes. So in, this, in that case, you still have to consider different way to uh, run your code for big, uh, lots of cores and lots of things. Uh, again, another thing is a mistake to focus on the direct parallel performance. It's not that we want to optimize we want to run a simulation labs which gives the best across 10 nodes, across uh, 500 uh, cores. 
um, if we have to do, if we can write an input script which can uh, make better use, makes better use of, the, of those resources. For example, do you really need to dump the trajectory every 100 steps? Do you really need uh, five, the five different computes? Computes are uh, operations that are done every, uh, that are um, uh, adding overheads to your calculation. Do you really need those? Uh, all, all of them. Uh, for example, if you have an equilibration and a, and a production run, do you really need to calculate the RDF during the equilibration? Probably not. Uh, do you really need to rebuild the, the, the list, the neighbor list so often? Though these are all the kind of things that can help uh, to speed up your calculation without, um, uh, without using more uh, resources, which is something that we have always, always to consider that the, the, resource, the resources, even young, even if young is a very big cluster, resources are not infinite. So we consider it when we run your calculation, we consider that the others when we run your calculation. If you can run your calculation without, instead of using 10 nodes, you can run the same calculation using two, it's better to spend a little bit on the input um, to, to, to try this kind of optimization. Okay. Now let's go to the last part of the of the of the, of the presentation. Uh, how to uh, mo actually modify LAMPS. So LAMPS is written in a very uh, modular form, uh, leveraging on the on the object-oriented classes of C plus uh, plus. That is to say that everything in LAMPS is a class. LAMPS itself is a class, uh, and it, it can, they can be callable for, by an external program. That's, that's why that, that, that makes LAMS very, uh, in LAMS very easy to, to, to be embedded in other, uh, in other, in other program. But the point, uh, I'm not focusing on that at the moment, I'm focusing on LAMS itself. So here we have a schematic of, uh, of how LAMS is built. So you can see uh, we have the core classes which are visible anywhere in LAMS. And from each core classes, there is, uh, we define a, these uh, red classes. Uh, and these red classes are the, the classes from which you can uh, derive children classes uh, to, uh, to add your own uh, customized uh, functions and calculations. For example, if you want uh, from the pair, from the pair classes, which is the parent class in this case, you, uh, in, in LAMPS you have the child class, which is the LJ cut, which is the, which is the Leonard Jones, the calculation for uh, the Leonard Jones interactions. If you want to add, add your own Leonard Jones system or another pair system, another uh, pair interaction, you just create a new child class called whatever you can call it, uh, uh, child, uh, which is a, a child of the, of the pair class. In this way, your, your new class inherits all the, all, the, um, all the properties of the parent class. And that means that the embedding this new class within LAMPS itself becomes automatic. LAMPS can take care of it without, without you having to write complicated stuff or having to add your own customized uh, thing in other parts of the code. <coughs> so let's say that you want to add new functionalities. Uh, you can use the existing, the existing classes as templates. And the first thing that you should answer is, what do you want to do? If you want to, you, to add a new potential function, then you will, yeah, that will, you will need to add a new pair style potential. Or if you want to calculate a, a new property at one time, then you will need to add a new compute. Or if you want to perform some operation with the others, you will need to add a new fix. I will show you what does it mean with this, uh, with this example, with the package cleaning that I uh, developing for the calculation of surface free energy. Uh, but before doing that, I think I will need to give you a brief overview of what the cleaving method methodology is. I don't want to just 
uh, four or five slides very quick. Uh, otherwise, I'm talking about thermodynamic integration, uh, and that not everyone is familiar and probably will not clear what, I, what I'm going to say. So in two words, the, uh, what we want to do is to calculate the surface free energy, which is thermodynamically defined as the work to create a new interface. In doing that, we use thermodynamic integration. That is, as the, as the name implies, we are uh, using the molecular dynamics calculation to modify the, 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 the system uh, to start from a position where the system does not have an interface, that is, it has periodic boundary conditions in all directions, to a system where the, the to, to a system where we are we have we have removed the periodic boundary condition in one direction. So what we are doing effectively is creating a new interface. We are doing this. Um, we are doing this transformation in a finite number of steps. Uh, and this uh, path is called the thermodynamic path. And we can calculate the work needed to uh, cross this thermodynamic path. And that work is going to be our sulfur free energy, the, uh, and the work needed to create this interface. So let's see how, let's see how it, uh, it is implemented in LAMPS in this new uh, package. Uh, this is done in different step, which represents different part of this total thermodynamic uh, part. In the first step, what we are doing is to cleave our, our system. So in this case, we have a Leonard Jones crystal extending in all, the, in all the three direction. In one direction, we are cutting the crystal and we are cutting it by using these, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, well, these uh, collection of wells. These collection of wells are basically, uh, we are defining a, a two dimensional grid, which we are putting in the direction perpendicular to the cleaving plane. And each point of this grid is equipped with a full, a, 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 an interactive potential. What, uh, what this uh, step does is basically to trap the output near the interface in these wells. So when we are removing the periodic boundary condition, these atoms are not, are not escaping from the system because if they are escaping from the system, we are, we are not having the, 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 the creation of this interface. We are disrupting the creation of this interface. In the second step, what we do is to actually create an interface. So what we are doing is to change the size of the box uh, by uh, increasing the size of the box, adding vacuum uh, uh, within the box. So the, the interaction between the, the box itself and its periodic boundary condition starts to uh, reduce because then the, we are using the uh, lambert jones type potential. So at some point, uh, the atoms within the box are, are not interacting anymore with the periodic boundary condition. In the last step, we are just removing the, the wells because the, uh, because the surface free energy that we want is a surface free energy of creating an interface of, of the system without the wells. So we need to also account for the work we included. Uh, we, we needed to put the wells in the system. So let's see how this is implemented. The first thing that I need is to define a new type potential, which I call LJG, which stands for protonic. This is a, just a modification of, of the, the standard Leonard Jones potential. Basically, you define, uh, you uh, choose a, a, finite time, a finite cutoff, and then you uh, interpolate the Leonard Jones potential up to zero. Uh, you smoothly interpolate the, the Leonard Jones potential up to zero. In this case, you don't have to consider the long tail correction for the, uh, for the uh, Leonard Jones potential. So, what I did was basically to take, this is the, 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 the original source uh, of uh, LAMPS, the, com the compute class pair, pair LJ cut. This is the name of the class that calculates the energy potential at the final cutoff. And I modify it to add my own post customized potential. So now you have, as you can see, the, the structure is very similar. I just have two, two if, let's say, 
if the, 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 you are before the, in, the, in the original cutoff, use the standard uh, Lennar Jones. If you are in this second cutoff, use the uh, modified uh, Lennar Jones that goes to zero. If you are uh, over the second cutoff, then, then the, the interactions is zero. Then what I did to, uh, I, I had to define the, the, the wells, how the wells interact with the others. And for this, I have to define a new fix. Because if you remember, the fix is something that changed, the, 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 is an operation performed on the others each uh, time step. And therefore I'm, I'm, I, I define this new fix, which I call fix force for well, or stands for polynomial for the shape of the potential. And basically this, uh, I use the standard lumps, apart from the name of the class, I'm using the standard large way of lumps to call the function. For example, this member of the, uh, the, the member of the, class, of the class fixed force for well called post force means that he is a, is a, uh, is a way to tell to lumps that this fix should be applied after the calculation of the force, the interaction between, between the other. Uh, so the, every new class that you're adding has basically also this fix as fixed structure. Uh, you define the, the constructor of the class, which usually rates the input parameter. You define the constructor of the class, the initialization, and the actual operation. And this is uh, all the all all the all the, all the new subroutine, all the new functions that are the, all the new classes that they wrote. In the cleaning package, so you can see there are computes, new fixes, uh, there are different ways to the cleaning. I just show a very simple case, but there are different ways to the cleaning. The cleaning is applied to different potentials, so you have to uh, define different, uh, define or redefine uh, some potential. And all these things are part of the, the cleaning package. All these things are something that we can die included in, uh, in, uh, in LAMS itself. Uh, now, I have a video to show you how you can comp compile LAMPS. In, La in La Young, there is already <coughs> some compiled version of LAMPS, but you can, in order to include your own customized uh, classes, you have to uh, recompile LAMPS. Uh, so let me show this video. I, I recorded the video to cut all the, all the dead times. We're going now to see how uh, how to install uh, lamps on the app. So the first thing I did was to download a file with lamps from the from the uh, from the website. So here you can download the uh, the latest the latest version, which is. Uh, from 20, 22nd of December 2022. You just download it and get this uh, star file that you, that you need to uh, extract. In this star file, there is a star directory. And here you have all the all the all the subroutines that are part of LAMS itself. Now if we type A, uh, don't start the uh, installation, but we get just a list of possible um, common options that we can use with A. Uh, in particular we have these options here. So in LAMS, uh, if, you, if you run a standard uh, uh, compilation of LAMS, you just install uh, uh, the base features. So everything else is contained in different packages. These packages are this, uh, this uh, uh, directors, directors here. Now, at the top, see that 
get the uh, specific comments of stored packages and also a list of the different packages in the uh, apps. So let's say that I want to install the molecule package, uh, which is the package that contains all the, all the specific functions uh, to, uh, to, to use molecules in the situation. So the bomb, bomb, and this package along the lines we need to do first. Yes. Yes. Uh, the last is saying that the package is stored, but means that this is not yet completion. We just say that. Uh, the, uh, all the all the all the sub functions were copied from the directory of the package to the main directory to the other lab the other lab sub is to run the really basic uh, configuration as I said it's not this is the basic one it's not even the uh, the parallel configuration which is available uh as you can see there are lots of different options so okay so lance has uh, compiled uh, everything and get the name of the executive here, which is LMP and score MPI. And now, uh, so this is the basic, basic in the sense that it's the standard allows the one that you get from the website with all the packages. So it's, it's the standard package. So let's say that you want to add something new. So you want to add new things. Pairs, as you can see, they will come pairs. Yeah, for example, fix screen for well, there is a CD file and the dot h file for h class. So now what I do is just to I just need to call this the labs Okay, so as you can see, Labs has have, has compiled uh, all the subroutines, uh, yeah, all this new sub here. Do it. So let us the strength of this framework. And we just need to write these uh, classes as child classes that demands all the all the definition from the files classes and then you don't need to uh, worry about how to connect these new uh, functions with the rest of the code. 
the fact that they're using these child classes and apparently these child classes meant everything uh, from the advanced classes means that all these connections are already taken care of. Okay, so uh, this was the way you can uh, uh, write your own uh, way. I showed you this very quick step forward if you use the lump structure. So if you want to write new stuff for lumps, I suggest you to take some time to study the lump structure because one, one, once you get that, it's very straightforward to have almost anything. Last bit of, of thing that I want to discuss today is uh, I talk about the flexibility of lumps, uh, but I didn't show anything uh, yet. <clears throat> So what I'm doing here with this piece of the input script that I'm showing you is actually not a single simulation, but a, uh, a series of simulations. In, in the cleaning, if you remember, we have to include, for example, in the step one, the wells into the system. The wells are included by uh, changing this lambda parameter, uh, which regulates the strength between the wells and the atoms from zero to one. So when lambda equal to zero, uh, the wells are not interacting with the atoms. When lambda is equal to one, the wells are interacting with the atoms at the full, at the full state. What you do is to define a, uh, intermediate values of lambda between zero and one. You run a simulation for each intermediate value of lambda, and then you collect the, 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 the work uh, for each value of lambda. The integration of that work uh, gives you the work needed for that particular step. Now, you can do all these things using the lump script without modifying the attitude. So what I did was to define, I'm using the loop, uh, the loop uh, uh, way of writing the script. So what I'm defining here is a, a variable lambda equal to a name, a file. Lamb is the name of the file which contains all the value of lambda from zero to one. Then I'm saying to uh, fix, to, to define, I'm, uh, I'm um, creating the new fix for the wells with this value, with this new value of lambda just read. Then I'm running the calculation. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm doing a recalibration. Then I'm saving the property only after the recalibration. So during the, the production, then I'm removing the fix for the wells because I need, I, I need a new fix with a new value of lambda. In order to do that, I have to uh, reset the fix. Uh, then I'm uh, changing the, 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 the variable, the counting by the counter uh, plus one. And then I'm using this command next. Next is a command that says read the next. Uh, uh, the next line in the, in the file. The next command is jump. Jump is say is basically equal to the go to the formula. If you are, if you are familiar with formula, basically it says uh, jump in the position of the script where you can find a label called here. That is to say jump here at the beginning of the script. So with this new value of lambda, uh, I'm uh, creating the fix again with this new value lambda. I'm running again another simulation with another uh, output file. And again, 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 I'm, uh, with, uh, um, I'm doing that for all the value of, the, of, the, of lambda in the file. When, the, when there are no more value in the, the file, then the next command just uh, re, uh, destroy this uh, variable lamb and jump the next jump comma so the, the the simulation ends so you can use lamps the standard lamps technique to run this very complicated stuff that in other in other codes we need some external wrapper or more complicated work around it to work. Uh, these are the results that we can obtain this is the work for each value lambda each each by each of uh, this value is a single simulation that I did running lumps only once. Uh, and with this, I can calculate the surface free energy. Uh, I'm just one the very last thing is,
this is the script that I'm using uh, on Yang. As you can see, I'm specifying the number of, I'm, I'm requesting 80 cores and I'm specifying uh, 10 uh, threads. That is to say, I'm running uh, 10 MPA processes with uh, 10 threads and lumps, just to check that everything is uh, as intended. Lumps is doing me the favor to write me exactly what I, I was using. So Lums is what is running. This is the standard version of Lums that is on Yang. This is not the one that they compiled uh, because I open a piece of an external file. But anyway, Lump is says Lump, Lump says that is running with 10 open MP threads and is uh, running with this number of MPI uh, processes, two times two times two, which means eight. MK processes and these decomposing the domains in this, in this. And with this, I guess I just come to the conclusion of my uh, of these uh, lecture slash uh, presentation with a couple of announcements. Uh, so this uh, cleaning package is part of this project surface, uh, which aims to create a new uh, a framework to run uh, calculation of surface free energy with cleaning in labs for different system and material. If you are interested in this kind of calculations, uh, please let me know. Uh, there are room to do or up to the different applications to this, to this package. And the second announcement is the fifth uh, Manchester multi scale conference in uh, the next time uh, period. The, the deadline for the abstract is on the 1st of February. Uh, so if you want to participate, I just strongly suggest you to, to be good. And with this, thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. I think we could just start by thanking Nicodemo for a, a brilliant talk. Um, do we have any questions in the chat or anyone who wants to? Start if you'd like to shout out or we'll stick your hands up. No, I think maybe, um, yeah, I think we've done an hour and 20, so maybe people have <laughs> quite, quite there. But thank, thank you so much for the talk. Um, yeah, sure, Anthony. Oops. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for a, a lovely talk. I really enjoyed it. Um, a fairly specific question. Um, I, I'm interested in um crystalline materials, which I know you've you've worked on. And you've just presented some some uh, calculations on them. Uh, but compared to some other MD codes, um, LAMPS doesn't seem to have a, um, a lot of sort of built-in or, or established infrastructure um, for setting up crystalline starting um, starting configurations. Do you do you have or do you know of any sort of standard infrastructure for that, um, or is it is it a matter of, of rolling your own? Um, and I'm talking particularly actually about things that are not necessarily sort of um, biomaterials and therefore you can't necessarily uh, assign all your, your your bond types and so forth um, using topper tools or whatever. So the, the, the short question is um, that is one of the weaknesses of LAMPS but luckily for, for us there are uh, there are external external codes that you can use to build your own, your own system. In any case, you can use a DMD, you can use, there is a, a collection of Python scripts called uh, Pizza, Pizza.py, uh, which is a collection of scripts to, to do some pre and post-processing for LAMPS. Um, and actually LAMPS has a, has a command to, uh, to build your own uh, system if it is a, you can specify crystalline structure to be repeated in the, in the different direction. But my, the, 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 the short answer to your question is, unfortunately, this is one of the weakest things. It, 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 it could be 
really annoying to set up your own, your own simulation because it does not have all the array of, um, of programs that, that allows pre-processing as Gorman says. Thanks very much. I'll look at pizza.py. Do we have other questions? Anyone else? I think there is a question in the chat. Oh. So, so basically, uh, that, that's a good question. I, I, I took me uh, lots of time to understand the difference. So basically, when you have a, a, um, uh, if you want to use the variable in your script everywhere else, as I showed you, let me just show the screen. But in the, you've got to just reading out the question just because I think um, we may not have the chat in the recording. Um, so the question uh, is, um, so the question about specifying variables um, must be specified as V underscore variable. Um, but there's also a possibility of dollar variable, V variable or C variable. So it's, it's been a question about how you specify variables in, in a LAMP script. So if you want to use the variable everywhere in the code, uh, then you use dollar uh, curly brackets and the value of the variable. The, the, the writing V underscore is used in the command like uh, this fix have a time which calculates the average of a quantity or of a quantity of a time. This is same to this fix that the lambda quantity of which it has to take the average is a, is a, is a variable. Here is saying that the, 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 um, the quantity of which, the quantity F2 of which it has to have to take the quantity of the, the, the average is a fix. So have a time, the fix have a time is looking through the, 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 all the fixes that are instantiated by LAMS and is looking for the fix F2 and is looking for the output of the fix F2 in this case. Again, for the, for the variable, uh, have a time, this fix have a time is looking through all the variables instantiated by LAMS the one that is called lambda and is uh, taking the value of that. So when you are using this other time and other few fixes like this that calculates these averages quantities, you have to specify the variable as V underscore or if they are fixes F underscore or if they are compute C underscore. Instead, if you are just using the variable everywhere in the script, like I did here, you have to use you can you have to use the dollar curly brackets uh, version. Okay. Any any other questions? Uh, yes, yes, we're not one here. So, is there any way to output thermo data more frequently just before crash in order to identify what's causing the system to crash? Um, so, I find during long simulations, if you're not outputting data frequently enough, it's hard to identify the issue. Yeah, yeah, you can you can output the data every time step. You choose where, from one up to whatever. You can you can choose every every time step that suits your needs. I, I guess the question, though, is is probably, um, you know, in a, in a normal production run on a supercomputer, you don't want to be putting out too much data, but if it crashes at some unknown point further on, is there any way to output more data before that crash, I guess? Um, uh, well, if you, well, that, that means, uh, I mean, that means knowing in advance uh, that, that your system is going to crash, and I mean, you have to specify, you can specify, you can change the thermal data, uh, during the simulation, uh, but you cannot you cannot tell LAMS in advance that if there is a crash, then bring more data if you didn't tell you uh, at the beginning of your input screen. What you can do is to uh, is to uh, refine uh, the, the 
the output we run in the calculations. Uh, I guess there's no option to, to increase the um, the amount of information at a crash point. I guess it depends what causes the crash, doesn't it? There's a difference between it. Well, the lumps, lumps is, uh, is very, it's very good. I mean, I'm not sure I would say like this, but it brings usually lots of information if something crashes. Uh, so you can, you can actually pinpoint in the code what is causing the crash. And it's not easy, but you have at least a way to a starting point. Um, do we have any other questions? Philip, um, have you thought about development your package for DL Poly 2? Well, uh, the point is, I so for the, for the question about DL Poly, uh, well, I started to develop it in LAMPS, if uh, but is not uh, focused on LAMPS. Uh, I mean, it's not, uh, it can be extended to other code, but for the moment, I'm just uh, working uh, both on the science or the developing this pretty methodology and have at least one way, one place where this uh, cleaning model is, uh, is written in, uh, completely. After that, I can think to expand. Doing that now is a little bit of a key because I'm still in the development side. Um, what would be the other, the other question? So one question is, uh, in my case, I'm performing yet EPD simulations using the use of whatever, and not specify the signal of silent with the style of the core coefficients. How could I change from LJ to real units? You just need to, there is the common units, instead of units LJ, you should write units real. I, if you, if you see my script, I, uh, I was specifying uh, sigma and epsilon, uh, equal to some value, and then I uh, multiply, for example, the cutoff by sigma or by, uh, by sigma. But I didn't need to do that actually uh, because I was already working in LJ units. I was just thinking in advance if I need to reuse that script for real units, where you need to do that. Uh, but changing the units is just a matter of changing the common units that you need to your script from LJ to real. Be, be careful that if you change the commands, all the all the all the coefficients for the various interactions are consistent with the new um, with the with the with the new units. Can you also comment on what order the fixed commands are executed? Uh, constraints like that, and of course, in more specific question for the use fixes which move up and like to the fix up those take effect. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is a, a, a good question. I, thank you. Um, so about the order of the fix, that is uh, something that I uh, didn't uh, uh, explore in my in the talk because it would have taken too much time. But basically, the order of the commands in LAMS is important. If you specify one fix before one other, LAMS can give you an error because it says that that quantity is not, is not defined yet, or you are changing um, uh, the, 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 some results in your, in your calculations. Uh, in this case, I'll, honestly, I never used uh, uh, constraints like rattle, so I'm not sure um, what to say about the order in this particular case. But as a general rule in LAMS, the, the, the order of the command is, is also important. Um, in fact, if you, if you remember when I talk about the, the, the implementation of the cleaning wells, I used a class called post force. That means that, that um, the forces or, uh, given by the wells were calculated after 
the forces between the atoms at that level. There is, there is also another class that allows you to calculate the force before the forces on the um, uh, on the on the on the atoms are calculated. There are some cases which this is important. So yeah, thanks for pointing this out. This is something that we could have taken another hour just to discuss this. Uh, if you don't do fixes which move atoms, does fix at first take effect? I'd say yes because the, the the fixes are different. Each fix does what whatever is written in the fix. So if you are not if you if you are not using the, the NBT or NB fixes, the, the, the atoms are not moving and the forces are not calculated. But uh, what the add force does is to <coughs> basically take the force vector. For it uh, defined for the atoms, which is defined when you, when you define the atom style, and set the force for each atoms, whatever it is, to zero, whatever the number is. So even if you are not using, you have not used the the, the fix and the ELMT, the fix should uh, should work uh, should work anyway. In any case, if for some reason, uh, I, I never used both of them. Uh, I never considered to use only one of them. If for some reason uh, they 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 are not they are not compatible, just one of those, then the fix uh, should uh, should uh, throw an error. For example, in my case, I have a compute that depends on a fix. A compute that depends on a yeah on a fix, and another compute that depends on on the, on the first time. So the very first thing that the computer does is to throw an error if the phase style is not defined. So in this case, everything in labs should work, should, should warn you and give you an error uh, if they cannot work together. Uh, thanks, thank you very much. Okay, so I think in the interest of time, maybe we, we should finish here, but we just start by thanking Nicodemo um, for a brilliant talk. Uh, so this we put on the website. So if you want to watch again, it should be available probably within a week or two. Um, thank you. Thank you for everyone by saying thank you so much. It's been been great. Thank you.